Liam O'Connor sneaks a quick look at the post, kicking for his own score. Alan Quirk once more leaves his line, takes it down confidently. He's got Jason Doherty though, snapping at his heels, balls in the net, but the goal won't count. Doherty was fouling the goalkeeper. And Jason Doherty there, sticking doggedly to his task, trying to knock that ball away from the keeper who has taken a pretty casual free outside to Michael Shields. And tactically, you start to wonder what Cork and Conor Cunahan might try to do, Paul, to shake Mayo off, to get on top, and to close this game out the way they were supposed to be. Well, I I think he has a problem around the middle of the field, and uh, he's a problem at this stage in the full forward line, they're not winning, so I think Cork have proven that the patient approach has worked over the last couple of years obviously against Dublin last year in the Ireland semi-final they came back from the dead uh, against Town in the final also they didn't change their style or strategy but maybe someday it's going to beat them and uh, I think they should change and put in a big man at the edge of the square and just vary the approach a little bit at this stage no score for Mayo now for almost 12 minutes Orca scored just the once in that time as this game becomes bogged down a little. Space here for Keith Higgins. He had a shot in the first half. He's going all the way and Keith Higgins makes absolutely certain. Carried it as far as he could and scores his first point of this season's championship. It's enough to put Mayo back in front and for once there was acres of space in front of that Cork defence. Well, Keith Higgins doesn't go forward too often, but he's one of the quickest players in the Mayo team, one of the quickest defenders, I think, in the country. And uh, on that occasion, he missed one in the first half, and that occasion uh, got a great point. And uh, again, Mayo attacking in waves, playing out in front of their players, moving the ball short but quickly and effectively, and uh, getting the ball to the runners coming from deep. So Mayo back in front for the second time in this match as Seamus O'Shea picks out Jason Doherty, the substitute. He's got pace to burn, but he's got Owen Carter for company. Manages to lose him, shooting for a very ambitious score, just didn't have the legs. And Quirk feeds it outside to Cadigan. Well, this game every bit as close and tight and tense as yesterday's match between Kildare and Donegal as Aidan Walsh flicks it through to Mark Collins. Left it behind, loose player inside is Gould, Gould! He's blazed it wide. The goal seemed to be yawning in front of Gould, who scored a goal at the other end last weekend. Robert Henley was out on him very quickly, but he really should have hit the target. Oh, what a difference a week makes. Last weekend, they were popping those <coughs> inside the near post. Uh, today, just a bit of a rush about Tried to side foot it by Hen Henley. Henley had made himself big, did very good as a, defend or as a goalkeeper, and uh, forced him to kick the ball wide, but it's certainly not going for Cork in the forward line at this stage and a real concern for Conor Cunahan. Cork outscored in the last 20 minutes by four points to one. The reigning league and All-Ireland champions out of sorts and in a real dogfight here to escape from this quarter-final with their reputation and title intact. Remember Kerry waiting in the wings for the winners of this quarter-final. Mayo are getting ready to bring in Pather Gardner, a veteran of so many big days here at Crow Park for Mayo, as Doherty again uses his pace to get out in front of Cotter. Acres of space for Andy Moran to run into. Michael Shields a little slow in arriving as uh, Richie Feeney links up with Moran. This is Killian O'Connor. Cork try to get themselves organised. Mayo probing patiently for a gap. Seamus O'Shea here. Runs right at the heart of the Cork cover, but too many bodies back there. And cleared away by Pierce O'Neill. O'Shea looks to have injured himself in that latest attack as Paddy Kassan steadies up. Gives it uh, short to Mark Collins, and Collins into the space to Donegal O'Connor. Once more, though, the Mayo cover arrive very quickly the reinforcements in to help out Tom Kniff, ball touched on the ground and Mayo get a free well they were written off completely coming into this match but they have brought a ferocious work ethic 
they have recovered from the concession of an early penalty and they are in the driving seat albeit only just swinging in to the final 13 minutes of this game Gardner's in for uh, Alan Freeman Ronan McGarrity is ready to come in and still no sign Paul of Cork getting their second win no sign, and this is a very sensible approach now. Sensible, two good substitutions, very experienced players. Ronan McGarry to shore up the midfield, and uh, Heather Gardner, of course, came into the Connacht final, kicked a great point to put Mayo one, one up in that game right at the end. Jason Doherty, he feels the shot is on, and he's nailed it. The impact substitute from Borishu, Jason Doherty, has kicked Mayo into a two-point lead. That was an inspirational score. He knew exactly what he was doing. He's only been in the game less than 10 minutes. And Cork, the All-Ireland champions, are two points down now. Yeah, fantastic score from Doherty. He's won a couple of balls earlier on, dropped one of the goalkeeper's hands, but what is noticeable again, every Mayo forward is in front of the Cork defender. The Cork defender, this much faulted Cork defence, playing from behind, giving Mayo the options out in front, and uh, Mayo are exploiting them every opportunity they get. So Ronan McGarrity, who's had uh, very much an injury-plagued season, is into the match. Seamus O'Shea can do no more. He has worked himself to a standstill. Now, can Cork respond? This is Paul Kerrigan trying to take Caffrey on the outside. Dangerous ball, O'Connor is in there. He got the final touch. Well, he could only divert it... Uh, out to the left and wide and you, you start to wonder when you consider they've been outscored since half time by five points to one Paul where are the scores going to come from? Well the key threats in the first half and the two I mean, Cork's two best players were Donald O'Connor and Paul Kerrigan they're now been marked very very tightly and I contrast the Mayo defence with what Cork are doing Cork are playing from behind their men Mayo defence are playing from in front of the Cork attack and it's working for them and they're putting Cork players under extreme pressure when they're shooting or when they're com competing for the ball psychologically as well it must have been very difficult for Cork to prepare for this match more or less home and hosed in most people's eyes before a ball was kicked unbackable money on favourites to progress to an All-Ireland semi-final and now here they are 10 minutes to go and two points behind Alan Dillon Trying to slip it through towards Doherty, who again gets there in front of Cotter, but this time Pierce O'Neill was back to cover. And now Graham Canty. So much experience, and Cork will need that now in this home stretch. Well won by Mark Collins. James Horan felt that ball was thrown in any event. His team have won it back. Trevor Mortimer, cheeky little pass to Killian O'Connor. O'Connor is making an angle for himself. Killian O'Connor, what a score! He's just 19 years of age. He's Mayo's leading scorer in the championship. That's his fifth point of the match, his first from play. He looked like he'd been doing it all his life. Mayo lead by three points now. A fantastic score from O'Connor, and for the last uh, 10 minutes, James Horn had switched him out around the middle of the field as an extra player again challenging the Cork management and the Cork defence to see what they can do to counter-attack that wasn't expected and uh, he's been playing around the middle picked up a couple of breaking balls as well and just drifted into that position nobody picked him up and a wonderful score and Mayo now really in the ascendancy and looked, looked like the All-Ireland champions against Cork Nicholas Murphy who had been named to start this match he's in he's uh, being paired up with Ronan McGarrity in the middle of the field as Conor Cunahan does everything he can to try and turn this match around. Cork have been completely overwhelmed in this second half. They've been outscored six points to one. And here come Mayo again. Jason Doherty, he's made a real impact since coming in off the bench. Kevin McLaughlin is outside in support. McLaughlin gets it onto his favourite left boot, but he snatched at the shot. Mayo, though, in almost complete control of this match with eight minutes to go. Yeah, and uh, if you're a Cork supporter or a Cork manager, you're just look, wondering where the scores are going to come from and who's going to be the game changer in this particular occasion because uh, Cork <coughs> look lethargic, Mayo putting them under extreme pressure every time they have the ball. Again, we see it just there, foul given away, but two and three Mayo players going to the player in possession. Cork look tired and uh, they really at this stage don't look as if they have any options and very surprising that uh, Conor Coonan isn't putting on a couple of players at this stage to try and change the 
the game. But when you consider that just 12 months ago, Mayo were watching the closing stages of the championship from the sidelines after being knocked out by Longford in the first round of the qualifiers. What a difference a year makes. Five of this Mayo team playing in a championship game here at Croke Park for the first time. But they're looking very comfortable. Andy Moore pulled down by Michael Shields emphatically in front of the court goal. That'll be a free in. And Andy Moran is proving to be a very willing and able target man in that Mayo full forward line. He's getting out in front of Shields, giving him a torrid time. And Conor Cunahan feels it's time to bring in another substitute. This is Dennis O'Sullivan from Baron Ascarthy. He's a, a wing back by and large. Finton Gould, so impressive last weekend, taken out. And he will join the likes of Alan O'Connor and Fiacre Lynch in that Cork dugout. Well, again, Andy Moore doing tremendously well. He's been out in front, as you said, all through. But, you know, with the exception of Donegal, there was a predictable look like to the final stages of this championship. And, of course, in recent years, Mayo have a tradition of upsetting the favourites. They did it against Tyrone in the All-Ireland quarter-final in 2004. Tyrone were the reigning All-Ireland champions. Mayo put in a tremendous performance then. They did it in 2006, of course. The famous uh, semi-final where they came back from the dead against uh, Dublin and today they put in a magnificent performance that puts them four ahead at this stage. Well that is six points for Killian O'Connor, five from freeze and Mayo extend their lead to four. No score for Cork now for 13 minutes. Michael Shields has just picked up a yellow card. And I think it's fair to ask at this stage, Paul, is there to be any way back for Cork with five and a half minutes to go? They don't look like they're prepared or any way capable of uh, putting together a rally. Absolutely not. As I said, you'd expect Cork to lift the intensity, lift the pace of the game uh, at this stage, which they have done so successfully in recent years, in the last couple of years, but it certainly doesn't appear to happen to look as if it's going to happen today. Mayo winning everything. And uh, Mayo again, as I said earlier, Instead of Cork, they look like the team that's, uh, that are the reigning All-Ireland champions. Cork looked very, very tired, and maybe the fact that they've lost those key players, obviously it was going to impact them at some stage, and uh, clearly today they don't have leaders in key positions and uh, are playing like a tired team, but uh, great credit to Mayo for uh, exposing them. And so far, that remarkable second-half record they have this summer is continuing. Just two points they conceded after half-time against Galway, just the one against Roscommon, and just the one so far here against Cork. It's been almost a total shutout as Pather Gardner tries to beaver his way through, stopped in his tracks by Owen Cadigan. Now, Dennis O'Sullivan. And the Cork players will have heard that announcement for the Gardaí and Stewards to move into their end-of-match positions. They'll know that time is very much of the essence. They're four points behind, and their All-Ireland title very much on the line now. As Mayo, who won a quarter-final here in 2004 against Tyrone, and five years ago, of course, uh, as Paul mentioned earlier, that late, late point from Kieran McDonald knocked out Dublin in the semi-final. Are they set to upset the form books yet again? 